Hello, welcome to Michelle Sars again. I'm Michelle. In today's collabathon for the So Purple to End ALZ Challenge, I am partnering up with the beautiful Talisha from Creativity by T. If you want to see what pattern we've made, then please stay tuned. Okay. So if you're not already watching Talisha, then go and check her out. She does a lot of really fun series, um, you know, like a month of tops or um, I don't know, I'm drawing a blank right now, but she does all these fun series. I love to watch them. Um, I always get new ideas from her. She also does really thorough pattern reviews. She does fabric hauls. So if you like my channel, then I'm pretty sure that you'll like hers. So go and check her out. So when I asked Talisha to do the challenge with me, um, most of the time I told people, um, you know, if they wanted to pick a big four pattern, that was fine. More than likely, I wouldn't be able to make the same pattern because most of their patterns don't come in my size. However, Talisha did pick a pattern that does come in my size. So I've made a simplicity pattern today. Um, so the pattern that Talisha picked is a really fun, like, it's just a fun pattern. So it's from uh, Mimi G and her husband Norris. It's the S9554 and it's this unisex oversized button up shirt. It's got, you can see it's got grown on sleeves. It's got a back yoke. It comes in two different lengths. It's hard to tell because he's taller than her, but he's wearing the shorter length. Yes, this is the shorter length and she's wearing the longer length. Um, I love the way that they um, have you cut the pockets on the bias. So it, um, if you make this in a stripe, it just gives that extra um, detail. Um, and it's got a stand collar, a button placket. So um, yeah, if you are familiar with making a stand collar, a button placket, or a yoke, a back yoke, then you will have no problem with this pattern. As far as fabric goes, it calls for lightweight fabrics like batik and linen and things like that. You need either seven or eight buttons depending on which length top that you make. Um, I, For fabric, um, I used this beautiful striped fabric. It's a cotton fabric. I got it from Joanne. Um, as you can see, it's two different shades of purple. It's like a light lilac and a darker purple. Um, they're not perfectly perfect stripes. They're very irregular, which I think adds some element of um, interest to the fabric. And it's a cotton, but it's not like a stiff quilting cotton. It's got um, a nice hand to it. So I'm really happy with this um, fabric. The sizes that the shirt comes in or the pattern comes in are extra small to XXL. The measurements for the XXL are bust of 50 to 52 inches, waist of 46 to 48, and hip of 51 to 53. My measurements fit in that size range, all three. So I made the straight XXL. However, there are some pretty significant uh, amounts of ease in this top. So depending on how you want it to fit versus how it was designed to fit, you might want to size down. So um, like I said, I made the XXL because that's the um, body measurements that it suggested I would need to make based on my measurements. The finished bust measurement for the XXL is 60 and a half inches. So there's eight to 10 inches of ease in the bust. So again, depending on how you want it to fit, you would need to make an adjustment there. May need to make an adjustment there. <clears throat> as far as the construction and the instructions, I didn't have any trouble at all. Um, I know I've heard that the big four instructions can be kind of difficult to follow. These were pretty, I mean, I guess because the, con the garment itself is kind of straightforward, I've made other um, stand collar button placket tops before. I've made yokes before, so I didn't find it difficult. Um, so if you have made, if you have experience with those three things specifically, then you won't have any trouble with this. One of the things that I did, I did two things different than what the pattern called for. One is I only put one pocket on because I didn't, I just didn't want that much attention. <laughs> So I, but I did want one pocket because I do love the detail of it being on the bias. Um, but I did do the pocket the way that I usually do patch pockets. Thanks to my friend Jen from Today and Jen's Sewing Room. I lined my pocket instead of doing the traditional 
fold over. Um, I just think it makes a cleaner pocket and um, yeah, so that's what I did there. It is a pretty big pocket, which is another reason I only wanted one. The other thing that I did different, so my fabric was not quite wide enough for the pattern pieces. So I ended up, which actually worked out fine for me because of my little T-Rex arms, but um, my sleeves are shorter than what the pattern called for. And the other thing was I did run out of fabric, so I didn't make the sleeve facing out of my fabric. In fact, I didn't make a sleeve facing at all. What I ended up doing was just using some purple bias tape that I had in my stash. So I just did that instead of using a facing. Um, they do, I'm pretty sure that the pattern, yeah, the, the intention of the pattern, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that, is that the um, edge is a raw edge um, and then the facing is just supposed to stabilize it. I didn't really, I didn't want that with this fabric. So I did the, um, the bias tape the traditional way. I do have some selvage on this sleeve. It doesn't bother me, um, but that's how far out I had to go to cut this pattern out for this size. Um, I could probably size down one size um, and still have it fit in a way that I'm comfortable with, but I'm perfectly happy with this. Um, I ended up making the longer length. Overall, I would say that this pattern is very easy to make. I didn't have any problems with it. And I actually really like the style. You guys know I like my big boxy comfortable clothes. And um, I am going to cheat a little bit here just because I am <laughs> running out of time to get everything sewn. I will come back to this, but I am, I haven't put on the buttons or the buttonholes yet. Um, I'm going to come back to that in October once I'm through, which is actually okay because I'm probably, I really like the way I styled this today. So I'm going to insert my twirl here and show you what it looks like with my styling. I'm wearing it as a duster right now. I want to put the buttons and buttonholes on it because I do think that I will wear this as a dress, but because of how open the sleeve is, if I wear it as a dress, then I'm going to have to wear like a tank top or something under it because you can see right through. So as a duster, what I did was I put a hot pink t-shirt on under it because I think that looks really good with the purple. I just wore some plain black leggings and um, I styled it with a long necklace. This is a Kendra Scott abalone um, stone, I think, necklace um, and some green stud earrings and then the the most exciting part is I pulled out my sequin, um, Steve, uh, my sequin Sam Edelman loafers that I love so much. Um, so they actually do the, um, you know how those pillows do the like flip of the sequins? These do that. I love these shoes so much. I used to wear these all the time when I was actually working in the office. These are not dress up shoes for me. These I wear with jeans and t-shirts <laughs> um, and they are super fun. They've got like a navy background and then the sequins actually have like an iridescent, um, you know, color changing uh, sheen on them. So love them. So that's how I styled it. And I actually, so I am actually leaving, actually I left <laughs> on Sunday to go to Ohio for a week for work and I'm definitely taking this along with me to wear as a duster for one of my outfits while I'm at, at work. So uh, I would love it if you would go and check out Talisha's video. I cannot wait to see what she made, what fabric she used and what she thinks of the pattern. I will tell you, she is much better at pattern reviews than I am. Hers will be much more thorough. So if you have questions that I didn't answer, 100% you need to go watch Talisha. Um, if you are following along but you missed yesterday's video, you need to go and check it out. It was with Stephanie from Stephanie Farrell Focus and we both made her new hoodie dress pattern. She's calling it Hoodie Hugs and it's not released yet. It's in the testing phase, but I think that you're going to love it. And then tomorrow my video is with Myra from Myra Lorraine and we're both making a raglan tee. Maker's choice. We're not making the same pattern, but we're both making a raglan tee. So I'm excited about that one. I love a good raglan tee. If you want to join in the Sew Purple to End ALZ Challenge, then all you need to do is make something purple, whether you're sewing it or knitting it or crocheting it 
or dyeing it, um, uh, any of those things, post a pic on Instagram, use the hashtag so purple to end ALZ22, tag me at the real Michelle Sews again. I had to change my name on Instagram because somebody hacked me. Um, and that will enter you in for the prizes. As usual, I'm gonna list all of my ALZ links in the description box. There'll be a link for the donation page in memory of my father. There'll be a link to the introduction video in case you don't know what So Purple to End ALZ is all about. It talks about my backstory. It talks about um, ALZ and um, things that you need to know. It talks about the prizes. It talks about the collaborations. And as usual, I'm gonna list all the collaborators in the description box here what project we're working on and what day we're uploading. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, then maybe you want to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can um, be alerted when my next video comes out because I am doing a collaboration almost every day this month and it's a little crazy. So wherever you are, I hope the weather's amazing. I hope you're able to get some sewing in and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.